In a Violent Nature is directed by Chris Nash and in this story it deals with a killer that gets resurrected after a necklace is basically taken from his grave that was given to him as a child and he goes on a killing rampage. And that's pretty much the bare minimum because the whole movie's hook is that you pretty much for the for one of the early, this is the first time that we see that you have a slasher film that involves where most of the film is taking place entirely through the killer's perspective. And as he, he's pretty much rampaging, rampaging through the forest, killing off uh, the people that did him wrong, along with some other uh, characters along the way. Now, here's a little backstory. Now, this was actually a film that I was actually kind of curious about uh, going into it when I was hearing the premise behind it and also the trailers. Uh, when I was watching it because when I was hearing about them trying to do this type of take where they wanted to focus just on the killer's perspective through the woods and stuff um, as like a similar way to how we saw with in the kind of style that's similar to Gus Van Zandt's movies like Elephant or even in some cases with Terrence Malick's films where it's mostly like very quiet in a lot of scenes and there's no really music playing and stuff I could definitely see the vibe they were going for with something like this and you know, slasher films have always been one of my biggest favorite genres growing up. I mean, as you can tell, I've always been a massive Friday 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street fan. And going to the trailers for this, it was almost like a cross between, well, a little less like Friday 13th and more like Hatchet mixed with like um, the, that kind of like, you know, I don't really want to say student film, but that very type of experiment level type of filmmaking, as they call it. Um, and so, going into this, I was really interested to see where it was going. Um, but I also had to go into the right mindset because of the way that it was kind of dealing with its type of uh, filmmaking style. And after upon seeing it, I can honestly say that this was definitely a likable movie. But unfortunately, there's a lot of things that do bog it down for being great. Um, I do give it a lot of credit for being something that's very different that we could see with other slasher films. And... This whole gimmick with it being pretty much in the killer's perspective has actually been used before, if I remember, from the, the remake of Maniac from 2013. Uh, but the difference is with that one is that it's mainly through the perspective of the killer's eyes. And with that one, it, feels, it was a slasher film, but it was also going with that whole type of vibe where you hear him pretty much talking and he's going on that psychological type level while still being very gory as hell. And so it's similar to that one, but this one takes the approach where it's more of the mute killer, and it's it's like if Jason Voorhees was just going through his perspective. And actually, and a, another good way would describe it is if you play the the Friday Thirteen video game, how you're snooping around with the with the camp counselors and stuff, uh, and trying to sneak up on them. That's the equivalent of getting something like this. And to it to a and it works to its an extent, but there's some other stuff I'll get into here in a little bit. But to get my pros out of the way, I thought. The, the cinematography, especially in the woods and stuff, was really great, you know, seeing the very, um, the nature and, and a lot of the stuff that's in the forest and the, and I believe it's primarily set in, Ontar in Ontario in Canada, and so the wilderness is definitely there and sets the right atmosphere. The killer himself is really cool, I really enjoyed that we get into some of his backstory and the way that he's able to kind of set some traps out here and there. It was definitely taking some inspiration from, not from... From Jace, from Jason Voorhees, from the Friday Thirteenth films, but also in some ways kind of similar to what I remember with the first with uh, the Hatchet movies, um, it, to to its extent of being very phys like very strong on his strength and stuff. But it also has some liberties of also kind of reminding me of uh, the the way that Jason Voorhees was setting up traps in the remake of Friday Thirteenth from two thousand nine. So. It, since we don't have a Friday Thirteenth movie that's coming out probably for a while, um, especially for the legal trouble. I'm glad at least we got something that would probably be a good experiment how you set up with Jason Voorhees doing that kind of level if they do something like this in the future. Because um, he definitely gets away with certain stuff in this that I thought was really menacing at times. And uh, it really got me caught me off guard in certain scenes the way he's, you know, trick Like, he's fucking with some of the, the people that he's coming across. And so th the killer is just awesome. And the... And, the kills themselves, what can I say? They're brutal as hell, and there's some unexpected stuff that I really was kind of shocked that, you know, how that was even possible. Let's just say that there was a scene that involves of, of the way he uses this kind of, like, um, hook that he uses or whatever, and I don't know how to describe it without going to spoilers, but 
just imagine like something that's basically inside out. I'll leave it at there. Like this movie doesn't hold back. It gets really fucking gruesome. And I'm glad we still live we still live in uh, movies these days that come out that know how to handle practical effects really well because this movie doesn't hold no bars and really showing you case what the color can does. And one of the other things too is I love the fact that it has no there's no musical score where it's just you know the, the actual sounds of the wilderness and stuff. And there's even even one creepy part that that not that uh, that has like this slow down type of music playing and stuff that was reminding me of something in, in a good way. I know this is a weird comparison and that's kind of the discredit for the other person I'm about to mention. But it, it reminds me of how they did the slow down stuff in um in Nope uh, from a few years ago where it was like very like like reverse reverbed uh, type of music that plays when it's very slowed down. I, it worked in a very creepy way and I actually do really like the mask that he, the killer wears too. It's almost like seeing Cabal from uh, Mortal Kombat basically as the as the killer in this. Maybe not as like, you know, iconic looking as like that mask does, but very similar looking with also hooks. So <laughs> imagine if Cobalt got his own fucking uh, horror movie spin-off. So that was cool and then also um, you know, just the 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 kind of stuff they get into with the the type of, I guess, metaphorical stuff they go into. I thought was interesting because there is an interesting, uh, pro, there there's an interesting part that happens toward the end of it that kind of reflects the whole like nature vibe that the movie's kind of going for. Because in a way, it's like the, the killer is is a force of nature of himself, is like a force of nature, but also. There's a lot of comparisons with with the killer being described as like a animal, so to speak. And I think that the the, the way it works in the context with that toward the end, with the when a character brings it up, I thought was was in, it was interesting uh, metaphor the way it played out. Um, it it does kind of go on a little too long with the story itself, but I still think that the the way that it was telling the story with it or telling the, the describing the killer, I thought was interesting. And so. Now, if I'm going to have to get into some of my cons, well, I'd say that, unfortunately, what the movie does buckle down to is that there is a, a lot of, unfortunately, bad characters in this that are very forgettable, and they're cannon fodder, and that's what you would expect of a slasher like this, but a lot of these characters really have nothing, and some of them really do kind of seem annoying, especially in the beginning, when you're here, like, when you, when he, the, when Johnny, the killer, is first encounter him and stuff, and it just comes across as like, okay, I get that they wanted to focus more on the perspective of the killer. That worked. But when it comes to just scenes that involve with the actual, like, victims that he comes across and stuff, it does feel like it's padded out in certain parts. And then especially toward the end, that unfortunately does boggle the pacing down to a, to a halt to where I did kind of wonder, like, where the movie was really going after that. And it has an ending that... I don't really know what it was really trying to do exactly, or maybe it was trying to maybe, uh, you know, I don't. I, it, I think it was trying to go for like a metaphorical type of vibe or ambiguous type of vibe, so to speak. But just the way it played out, it feels like it was a little anticlimactic, and it, and it could have at least ran longer because the movie is only ninety minutes. But a lot of it does feel like there's scenes where that are just kind of padded out, where he's just walking in the forest and stuff, and then you have like a kind of a drugged out. A drag a dragged out scene toward the end that involves with some more walking in a certain way, um, and I don't really want to go into spoilers or anything. What happens at the end, but it just kind of feels like it was getting a little bit repetitive, and some of it could have been trimmed out. There's a lot of scenes in the beginning where that does work, where you're having the killer, you know, setting the stuff up and things like that. That I really did get into because I do kind of like the I do like that whole slowborn type of vibe, but the problem is that it did kind of get oversaturated with doing too much of it. On top of that, some of the, the some of the dialogue that they have too does feel very cringe at times, and you know they, the characters do your typical type of slasher stuff that where they get themselves into doing dumb things at times. Um, where they're, they're a type of archetypes, they're, they're the type of they're the stereotypical people that get killed in their own stupid ways at times. And while this is definitely not as insultingly stupid like it was with. The Strangers uh, Chapter 1's level, but it does feel like there's really nothing to really describe with them because any in the characters, they're really just cannon fodder. You know, they don't really have anything to them. Although, there was one person that showed up in the film that I was actually kind of surprised that he got an appearance, and believe it or not, this was an actress that appeared in Friday 13 Part 2, so I thought that was actually really interesting they got this girl to, to come back. Uh, they got the, the an actress from that movie to actually come 
out of retire come back to acting again and doing a role in this. And I thought she was really good, at least seeing her again, you know. I get this is a movie that's probably not going to appeal to everyone, especially if you're really into those type of slasher films that, you know, are a lot more well-written and, you know, at least have a lot more uh, substance to it to a lot of ways. Because this definitely does feel like one that feels like it's more style that I can see the complaints with, but... It didn't bother me too much. Well, I mean, it, it bothered me to a certain degree, but it didn't bother me in the fact that it, I was still able to keep myself engaged where it was going throughout the film. And it did have its issues, don't get me wrong, but it's definitely one that I could still get myself behind because I still liked how it played out as a, as a fun type of slasher film when it does work in the right way, especially with the killer like this. And, hey, you know, maybe one of these days if... if uh, if they ever do like other films like this or do any kind of follow-up, you know, I'd be curious to see where it goes for sure. This is definitely one that if it would have came out in the 80s or 90s, this is something I could have really picked up on a blockbuster as a rental, uh, especially on the weekend or something like that. So I could see this also being released in Shudder uh, when it comes out later on and everything. But with it being theatrical release, I'm glad that a company like Shudder and, and also IFC Films that do this, they're at least trying to experiment with some films like this and also... Uh, late Night with the Devil that really had their way of of turning well, uh, find it, at least doing well in theaters on a good, on a, on trying to re to reach uh, a certain to trying to reach the right audience and stuff. So I give the movie a lot of good intentions, but it's also one that I don't. I mean, it's it's one that I think that if I do own it, if I ever own it someday, it would be a good watch as a good type of experiment. Um, it's something that I could probably watch me with friends, and especially with some of the kill scenes and stuff, and the way, if you want something different as far as slasher films. But if, with that being also said, it's one that I think really could have been a whole lot better with, but it still was a decent watch. And so with that, I'm going to give the movie a high average show on the Film Freaks meter. So, for those of you who have also seen uh, In a Violent Nature, let me know in the comments below what you thought about it. And thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in my next review. I'll see you later.